Welcome back survivors! Today I will show you how to build a Z-Killer base. It's a kind of a zombie grinder. This gives you a really awesome advantage because it don't will make uh, damage on your on your base when you have um, the seventh day and the hordes are coming over you. So also it has um, a kind of carousel you can see it in the levitating balls. They are free and the uh, zombies will try to walk over this. I have some plans for you, it's a long video today, so I'm sorry, in some parts I was making it more fast, so you can just pause the video, take a look on what I was doing, and uh, then can jump. Also I will put some uh, chapters in this video, so in the description you have also the links to the chapters, and it will show you how to build this. You can see I have some storage, some dart traps, and some um, electric fans. And also will show you how to connect all this. Here I show you and demonstrate you the how it works because it has the kind of uh, zombie carousel. All the time they are running in a circle, and down you can see here is the kill zone. The dart traps are killing them, and the uh, electric fans are trapping this. If you have the correct skill, you can harvest passively some experience points. If you put your skills to get the XP from the traps. Or if not, you can use the Molotovs, just drop, in, uh, drop them on the sets and the dart will do the rest and you will have the full experience points for the kills. I'll drop this here, so. And one here more. It's really far. Also have some uh, really awesome plants you can take a look on it on how big all the space is so you will need to put out some of the earth from the ground so <laughs> it definitely will take some work from you. Outside we have this kind of trip wire. These are the sensor for all the mechanism. And in the kill zone we have the dart trap looking each other, facing each other. And outside we have this kind of electric fans. They are pretty awesome because they will trap the, the, the sets for some seconds um, in the position so the dart trap can make some more damage. First of all, let's take the engine. Take care there are enough engines inside because it will require a lot of electricity. So we connect this here to the first tripwire, from the first tripwire to the second one over here. So, and now we can see this is connected. Then we'll go over here and connect the tripwire with the dart trap. And the dart trap with the other dart trap. So, in the moment when you are on the tripwire, it will trigger the dart traps and they will throw the darts on you or other players or the set. So be really careful if you drop into the kill zone, um, it will give you really hard damage. Also, from the uh, tripwire, we will connect the electric fans and from one electric fans to the other. Now charge the dart trap. Uh, the dart trap, not the tripwire. Lock it. And now we'll show you. A second on the second we can also put here another this will increase of course the damage because the most uh, zombies are two blocks high so some more <laughs> it will require a lot of material you will see it in some seconds I will show you so this is how it works the zombie will jump on it get trapped by the electricity and killed by the dart traps it have here four dart traps making damage in stained together. Okay, first I will put around here some blocks. This is the outside frame. I will show you here the frame outside. So if you need to dig, it will be in between. In some seconds I will show you some uh, the, the plan, the schematic with um, exact measurements. So first I will put here this and here are some blocks more. It's just for the optical for this video. So it's not important, we can jump over this because I want to dig down in the side. So, tup, 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 tup. 
here's some more too yeah so you can see inside of this frame we need to dig down yeah you can see here exactly we have um I was putting the wood, uh, the wood outside is uh, 17 by 19 and inside you need to dig a hole from 15 by 17. You can see it here. When you have um, dig the wood, you take the measurement by 3 by 5 to start the blocks and the kill zone will be 4 by 5. The red part is the kill zone. This here are the arrow slits. You can see in green is the outside. It will protect the wall. These are the dart traps. Behind the dart traps comes the trip wires. And behind the trip wires just a layer of electric fans. We just need one. We can make them in a kind of um, square but it's not necessary. And there we have the stairs to go up for the carousel. This is the material you need minimum, but I think the iron dials, you don't need really the 27,000. You can start also with a lower amount, but just take care, you have charged or charged and locked all the dart traps. Okay, starting to tick, 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 tick. Down the earth. So if all this is done, and you can see I was taking inside of the wooden frames, <laughs> not under the wooden frames. Um, also, you don't really need to, to take it out. Just I want to put after some concrete walls. Sometimes the sets can uh, dig down, and they can re make really hard damage on your on your traps and the electrics. So after I want to put here all the wall along some concrete, just to protect a little bit more the mechanism under. So, we take the 3 by 5, 1, 2, 3. So, here, here, here. You can see. This will be the place we will placing the, the... We will place the mechanism on it. The trip wires and the dart traps and also the, the arrow slits. When you have it, it looks like this. This will be the place. Um, also, I was occupying the place for the electric fences just for the optically part. To see which place will, occupy it, will be occupied by the mechanism to kill the sets. Just do the measurement to have all in the correct distance. So on this side also we will put some place for the for the darts on this side. The empty space in between of these blocks will be the kill zone. After we'll fill it also with uh, some concrete or steel blocks. Just now um, to have it visualized, I will leave it a little bit empty. Okay, so to show you, it will look after like this here with arrow slits, with the dart traps behind the trip wires and the electric fence. But for first, I will uh, remove it again and um, place all this here. Also, I recommend you to place the dart trap at least. Should be the last one because otherwise you cannot to connect the electric wires from the electric fans and the trip wires. In this, in this distance, because it's a really big place, a really big, really big killer base. Um, it's difficult to connect. You know, the electric wires have just a maximum distance you can connect it to somewhere, to some uh, other device. So, on this side, we will put this shape here. It will redirect the sets better to the stairs. So they don't will really make so many damage. This is a really, a really stressed point from this base where the sets are um, getting stuck and make a lot of damage against the walls. So uh, after the first, after the first usage, you will see 
where is the most big stress, where is the most big damage from the sets in the blocks and the material. So these are also will be the parts you need to reinforce. So putting some stairs here, putting this up, so and yeah, looks like this. Here we'll put some more trip wires here and here. These I will remove, this was just a placeholder for the electric fence. So, we don't need electric fence in all parts. Just, um, I'm, I'm using the just uh, parallel to each other, I was using another base also um, in a kind of uh, raster to have the double, the double um, damage and the double trap efficiency, but I saw it was not really necessary and sometimes you need really a lot of engines um, to power this mechanism. Yeah, you need minimum two engines, for this reason I was putting here two relays. So we are powering with this down relay or these strip wires on this side. So and with the other relay or the horizontal trip wires. This will reduce the possibility also to have uh, damage on one of the both um, systems and equal it will make a lot of damage. So, as you can see now, we can connect one trip wire from one side to the other. The point is I won't just always trigger one row if there are some zombies inside and not all at once. Also you can um, use this kind of sensor in series. I will show you in my electric, um, electric tutorial video. Just in this case is not necessary. So here also we'll put some trip wires. On this side I'm using four. Also can make a, a fifth one on the left side just in this moment. I, I don't see really necessary to use so many material and so many um, dart traps. You will put one of the trip wires under the under the floor on this side. So I have the reason because on this side are just two and the other side are just four. So on this side we are connecting with the upper relay. You can see where this is going. Yeah. So, and also here is some. Um, ah, no, this was the wrong one. So, the trip wire, connecting the trip wire with each other. Zuck, zuck, zuck. So, okay. Now we have the trip wires connected. Uh, for the next, we need to put the electric fans. One time I was doing the mystic, I was putting the dart traps in front, just uh, after you cannot to connect with the electric fence even more. So you need to remove all the dart traps and this will take a lot of time. And if you're playing not in creative mode like me here for this tutorial, uh, you don't really want to scrap them down to, to save the, the time and just to waste your materials. So let's put the electric fence, yeah we have it here connect the back side, the second trip wire, with the electric fence and this electric fence with the other side. You can see this row now is triggered by the trip wire also to trigger the electric fence. This will trap the sets for some seconds and this is the maximum distance. You can see I just can't go until here to connect my electric fence. If I try to go more close, the cable became red and it indicates you to um, to have the maximum distance to your to your main device, to your source device. See also while flying this is just too much distance so to go over or to make a hole up is not really working. I was trying in another base to make a tunnel under to reconnect it after a demolition was exploding and disconnecting all the all the um, wires and was making intense damage on 
many of these of these uh, devices, but it was a really hard hard night. Uh, usually this is not a problem. The the dark trap don't activate the demolisher. You know the demolisher is the zombie with the detonator with the green button and when you hit the green button it became red, start to blink, make a sound and after you have open your ass. So is to put here the brutes, the darts looking in your direction in the kill zone. Some here and here and here. Of course here too. It is too fast to you because I really want to save the time with this video and don't bother you with uh, slow motion <laughs> creative mode videos. You can pause, go back to the to the chapter or just take another look in the in what I was doing before. Okay, now we connect the tripwire, the, the second tripwire with the down dart and then with the up part. You also can, can connect to the two darts with each other, but I don't recommend you because so you can see if you have a problem with the with the connection. If you connect one dart to another, you cannot see if the wire in between is really connected. I will show you here. I connect the down dart and now the down dart with the upper dart trap and now you can to see if this is connected. So just to be secure we will, <laughs> we will make it visible the connection with the wire tool and connect this here. Nice. So if we have this here we can go here in between and connect the down dart with the down dart on the other side. The up dart with the up dart on the other side. And this will repeat, we will repeat with all the darts. Top, 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 top. In this case you can see if you have a miswiring or something is not connected correctly, you have it uh, good visualized. <laughs> it's a little bit of mess up, I know, but um, it's better so. My experience of showing is uh, better to have visualized um, all the electric um, direction that's going to. These trip wires here in between will trigger directly the darts on the other side. The reason is because on this side, of course, we don't just put in darts. If you want, you can do it. You can also put here some arrow slits and uh, some blades in, in front to protect it. Just um, I don't saw it's necessary. It's Next, we will take a look. Yeah, it looks really nice. We will search the arrow slit. You know, this is uh, really common for castles and um, you can shoot through this. So, yeah, this here. So, we'll place this here. The dart traps can shoot through. Of course, I'm making now all in, 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 frame, in frame blocks. The best is, of course, to save time and material you're using in the in the material you have, like um, some cobblestones or some, some concrete. I really like the seven days communities asking questions in the commentary sections about my tutorial. And of course, if you want to stay updated with um, what I'm doing here, and if you like this video, a really simple way to show me is um, to give me a subscription and of course to hit the bell. And uh, <laughs> really I was impressed I'm not updating so many videos because of time and work I try to to use my free time to make these videos and of course half hour, one hour of video is really many so to cut this is a whole day of work. So give me a subscription if you like this and you want to see more of these videos and don't forget to hit the bell if you want to stay up to date when I upload new videos. And also give me in the commentaries when you have some ideas, some suggestions about videos. So of course, yeah. Like I told you, use the material you have. I think maybe now to put this in, in, in the nice um, yellow wood frames is, is awesome because you can see it really clear how many blocks I'm putting. I will put some more over here. Of course, the place is to put the, the top cover up here. Um, close it with a uh, dense material. I saw 
this um, this floor here don't have so many stress. Usually I'm using here um, just couple stones to save the material. Of course it's dependent on your game staging and how many resources you can uh, spend for this. Also if you want, um, I, I was digging here a lot of earth out to put some walls. You can spare one block inside and don't put walls. Just I don't recommend it because sometimes the sets can dig down, especially the 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 crawling the crawling one um, can get stuck in the block and then make a damage in front of the blocks in the earth. So as we can see here, it's more or less close it here. Top 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 top. So finish. Um, this is how it looks like. You can see the inlet for the electricity. This is the kill zone with the arrow slits and the mechanism in between. I think it's time to remove this frame here. It's not necessary even more. It was just for a visualize. Yes. So, next part are the stairs. The stairs and the zombie carousel. You see out here. Put the stairs directly here in the border. And taking some blocks to fill it. Pathfinding from the sets will make them think they can walk over this carousel and go into the base. So all the time when you're standing in front of uh, this carousel, in a, visible, in a visible position, the sets will try to run over the stairs. Here. You can see one, two, three wide going over the kill zone. So we will fill this here. This is just some support for the for the actual moment. Continue to watch the video. We'll see. I will remove these blocks. It's just to to hold the actual to the actual blocks. This will turn around. So you can see it's just a half block, but the the zombies I think they can walk on this. We'll put another on the other side. And now you can see it has one block distance. This is far enough for the most um, walking sets to think they can go over this and they will fall in between and then falling down. Like my blocks. Okay, let's try it again. So, and so. We need here on the opponent side. Here and here. And then we make these flying balls. <laughs> so here in the inside also, I was jumping a little bit in this video, I will do the frame in the inside of the base. In a second you will see it from outside, how it will look with the half spheric shape on the outside. Here I like to put some from the from these iron bars so I can see what is happening under the base and in the case um, some zombie is too intelligent and is not following the path algorithm and is trying to, to make some damage on the support beam. I can I can shoot down and kill them. And also I saw um, sometimes the sp spider runs, the crawler, the jumping one, they can jump into the base. For them it's possible to, 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 with the velocity to just jump over it and uh, then they can go inside and in the iron bars they are just going to stuck. They are just stuck in there trying to make damage against the door and then it's really easy to kill them. So the iron bars here have some advantages and you also can upgrade them with um, concrete and steel so they will have a really high, um, really high health point value to take the damage. Outside, like I was putting here, you can put an all the base the blades. 
this will give an additional armor to your base in the front side because the the police officers um, when they are coming to vomit on your base they can make a lot of damage so it's um, a really big advantage to put to put an additional layer outside so here I'm try I'm, I like to make this kind of triangle shape the stairs here and the reason sometimes I have some uh, pipe bombs to put down to drop down um, into the kill zone to clean up the sets um, if the mechanism get damaged so for this I have here and here also some protective iron bars so you can see here this is the carousel so they think they can jump over this but they will fall in between I was displacing a little bit the relays if you have the possibility you can you can put the relays um, more close under the base it will make more easy the it will make more easy the connection for the wires Here I want to do a catwalk. I saw it's a little bit advantage, but I was not really trying many. I saw when I stand over here, I can throw much more easy the the Molotov cocktails on that set uh, without killing myself or putting myself to the fire. So closing this part here, closing these walls here. Closing this wall here. I like to have left and right open uh, part for the doors so I can go in and out and putting some iron bars and a catwalk outside to walk around the base um, in a secure height over the base and to look what's happening under. Okay, this is the base schematic you need. All other is just a kind of uh, improvement. I will show you how I like the base of course for this part from now is more just uh, optional. Of course you should not do it just in, 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 in frame blocks <laughs> so you need to upgrade this or do it in your material. Putting some additional armor like this here it will reinforce the durability from your base um, on a really nice instant level. So some here, some iron bars too. Of course outside. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, like this here. Here we we'll go the place to go up. Now it's time to place our our electric generators. So we need a generator bank and some engines. We place these two here. Fill them with the engines. So like this here. And then to cover it. Also on the top is really important because uh, sometimes some sets are possible to jump on the base and make damage on your roof. So to have a good um, a good protection on your roof is also really important. In this part of the video, I was doing a little bit of displacement. I will show you after why the displacement from the engine. I will, I will show you why. But for first, um, I think you can understand what I'm doing here. And next I'm putting here some place for air defense, some auto turret to defense the vulture uh, coming to attack from a path. I really hate this. <laughs> so I like to have my back clean. 
and secure. So I'm putting here some iron bars to be safe from these creatures. It's not really necessary to have it like this here. Of course you can try your own style and uh, to work a little bit with this. After, after the placing this I saw it was a little bit of a mistake. In this place I will put now the outer turret in this video. But um, in general it is working really fine. So putting some platings out here. You can see I have a lot of space inside, in the space. The reason for this I'm putting is because I want to have some chests. In the feral night, in the, in the, in the seventh night, you will see there will come a really big, insane, infinitive horde of zombies and you will have a lot of loot to save close to your base. So, we have the plating, the, the, the shielding for the armor around this here. It looks like this here, some more. Yeah. So I can make a little bit of roof over it. If something is trying to attack from above, um, I have really nice protection and a uh, few around for 360 degrees to shoot everywhere to kill the vultures. So let's try to put it here. One more. Okay, looks nice. Mm -hmm. Some plates just for protection. Yeah, this is the point where you can stand to shoot down your molotovs and to to trap the to to track the zombies to come to your base. This is how it looks from the front. So, shoot other few. Here in the top, I'm placing this small bar I was um, showing you in my. 50 tips. I think maybe I'm not sure if this is working like this. I will uh, retry it after. You can see when you spawn a zombie, or you're putting a zombie there to track it. If you want to come, yeah. So <laughs> in this beach, it sounds like a cut. <laughs> so you see, she's running up there and trying to come over to your base, falling down into the kill zone. Of course, actually, I don't have charged or activated any trap. Uh, even uh, not connected the engines to the generators to the to the traps. You can retry it from here. Is um, to take a look if the pathfinding is working. You can see now she was trying to turn around. Something here is not working correctly. And if she stucks down there and not trying to come up, she will make uh, intense damage. Or the sets in general in the horde will make intense damage uh, in your mechanism. So. Also, before you try this base in in uh, <laughs> in production in the Horde Night, um, try it with um, single zombies. Pull them to your base and look how they are behaving. Look how they are trying to go into your base. So for this reason, I saw these bars here was not the correct one. I need to put them more up so they think they can go under this. Since now, since version 20, you saw the sets can go in four legs and uh, crawl in a hole from just one block. So if this one end um, close to two blocks high um, hole, they think they can go over this. This is enough. But also, it's big enough if they are kitchen dropping over this hole in between the in between in between of the walls, uh, the balls, they don't will go into your base. The chance is more high, they are just falling down here. So you can see, she's falling down, coming up, and falling down again. So the carousel is working.
Okay, enough. So let's improve a little bit the base to connect the generators. Make a hole here or before, so watch the complete video. Um, we'll make some holes or just um, don't put the blocks in first place, so watch the complete video, please. <laughs> so I'm doing some improvements uh, while I'm capturing the, this video. Yeah, putting some more relays here. You can see if you put the relays in first place here. Ah, this is too high. No, yeah, like this here. One here, one here. Connecting one relay from one side to the other. So, I'm not sure if this is working like this here. Uh, no, I cannot jump out here. So also you need to have a hatch and a hole to go inside for for the for service and to to reload to recharge the the traps. Okay, one for the ladder and one for the relays. The reason is simple is because the, um, in a case you have some damage in your mechanism, you need an easy way to service this to reconnect it. With the dart trap, never had the problem to trigger um, to trigger the, the demolisher to have damage on these um, relays or the electric mechanisms. Is more probably you have an accidentally shoot on the demolisher. Or with me, um, I had the problem. My auto turret was possible to spot the zombies, shooting on the demolisher, activating their their blaster load, and it was making intense damage. I'm putting here two hatch over each other. This should give enough protection and have the possibility to reopen it if it's necessary. Also, maybe hatch are not always necessary. I saw sometimes they are um, attracting the zombies to make damage on it. And I will put them here. I will spot this. Maybe it needs a little bit of improvement, so I will put hatches here too, just for security. There's nothing more worse than a Z dropping into your into your um, trap room with all the traps and making damage on the relays or making damage on all the wiring and after nothing is working even more and you're just stuck in the in the hard night and you cannot go out and the sets will just destroy all the base and all the kill zone so one more here yeah, with these relays i will put some blades and here i will Place now the blocks, of course. This you can place with uh, some some normal bladings or some some steel or concrete, as you like. I saw this is not a really stressed spot here on this side. This part here have many stress on this side too. So left and right from the stairs, I saw um, that sets really like to make damage when they are going up the stairs to go out there. Yeah, a little bit of clean up. I was trying to place the ladder here. I will show you later. I will do it. Close this part here too. And after is to close here this with platings. With additional um, plates of of concrete or cobblestone is uh, is usually is enough. The reason is sometimes the 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 the, the crawler zombie is this scrolling zombies are coming over and they're getting stuck in the corner so they are making a lot of damage in the in the corner from the block or in the earth and they're digging down and then other sets are getting stuck in the hole and they're making damage so to have a smooth walk 
onto this killing place is making okay <laughs> is um, show effect um, is to put here some plates. These don't need to have a really big, uh, really good armor or health points um, because usually they don't have a high stress. It's just to have a smooth walk for the sets and the, the crawlers. So, let's remove this part here. You can see I was changing a little bit the shapes. This is to don't fall down. I have I have the possibility to drop here my Molotov cocktails or my pipe bombs down. And out here you see I was reinforcing all. I will do it with all the, ba the, the base now. If you want to save some material, you can start to reinforce from the front. To have two layers with the block and the with the blocks and the, the armor blades in the front side from the base is the most important. Some armor platings here, so that nice so okay. We'll upgrade all this here. I don't want to bother you with... Um, I will jump just a video. Okay. We can continue here. Taking a look on the base. The side. And to put all these plates and all these frames to reinforce this is the most important. We need to guarantee the structure integrity from this base. <laughs> of course, in the creative mode, it's uh, really easy to tell just to put this, but uh, you see where it's going. So. Here I was putting my auto turret. It's my air defense against the vultures. As after it was a little bit of displacement because from the stairwalk it's possible to spot the sets in front of the of the carousel. So it's necessary to put up a little bit the camera. Otherwise it may be can trigger the demolition and this is actually what we absolutely don't want. So we're connecting the camera with the with the generator. Also, if you saw, I I'm starting all the mechanism directly by the generator. The reason is I was using several times um, some switches to start and to stop the mechanism, but I saw in the case of the explosion from a demolisher, the switches will be just blown off. Also. In case of the trip wires, you also can use the motion sensor, the camera, to um, to detect the sets. But you need somehow to ex expose this to the to the to the outside. And in the case of an explosion from a from a demolisher, the camera, the motion sensor will just also get blown off. So I was uh, took uh, I took the decision just to use the trip wires. They are more nice protected. So using some iron bars here, some ladder to go up two blocks high. I was showing you also in uh, the other video with the fifty with the fifty tips and tricks for the gameplay. Making some improvements here. So oh, also this part here. Okay, now down in the room we will charge all the dart traps. You can see here, don't forget to activate just the sets and to lock it. You need a lot of dart traps, of course you don't need to charge all of this. I was trying with around 200-250 sets and I saw it's just um, 
just taking around around 250 to 300 darts for 250 sets by trap. So you can put in the first days, if you don't have so many materials, if you don't have so many darts, you just can put some uh, one stack or a half stack in each dart trap. Of course, this is just now a test to take a look how it is working. And you can see it's working nice. They're falling inside, they're getting killed. Yeah, see, the electric fans are stopping them, so they are standing on a tripwire, getting continuous damage, and they cannot move even more. So this usually is enough to kill the sets. You can see, more or less, all are falling inside, are also getting killed instead. And you can see also the down here we have some loot. In this amount, this was um, 75 sets. Ah, I saw. Ah, okay, for this reason the noise. It was not locked completely. I think. I will show you how it works with demolition. I had several times the question if the demolitions are dangerous to this and uh, can get triggered by the dart traps and I don't have the experience. I never saw any demolisher got um, triggered by the dart traps. So just will try it out. Yeah, take a look. All is working. Closing this here. And you can see, you can, you can, you can monitor the, the performance, the power, what is used to, to kill the sets in the kill zone. Over here, you can take a look also in the spots, in the... Oh. Die, 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 seven die. <laughs> you can take the the loot, you can see the Mar Marlene, zombie Marlene. Don't have so many nice ma so many nice uh, loot, she's not dropping so many. With the demolitions, of course, what is a really is a, a, a difficult boss uh, zombie, um, a special zombie. They are dropping a lot more loot and a really lot more of nice loot. So of course you can see how many damage they are taking. Oh, go away from here. This is the point what I mean with the iron bars to spot what the sets are doing under you. This is pretty important what is happening here. Just take a look on this all the time. Of course I was spawning here 75 um, demolition in one time so it's maybe stucking or lagging a little bit until the path finding algorithm is um, putting them in, in, in the direction from the base. So you can see they're taking a lot of damage. And then they are dead and like this. So you can see here how many loot they was dropping. It's insane. Really, usually there are so many ammo inside you can survive without any problem the next day is the next set and these here are the stress points. I was telling you before, take a look after the first uh, days, the first usage, there is the most uh, the most damage in your base. These are the parts you need to reinforce. These are really the important parts to put more inside. I hope you liked this video. I hope to see you soon again in the next tutorial. Goodbye.